Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Kiara. Feel free to call me Q. And today we are going to be starting pepper seeds. So I start peppers very differently than I start any other of the seeds for my garden. And this was something that has definitely been a learning curve for me and has had a lot of trial and error. And I think I finally got a system that works really well for me. So I really wanted to share it with you guys. And maybe this will be a system that works for you too. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually gonna be germinating these seeds and we're not going to be using soil yet. So we are going to be putting them in Ziploc bags and I'm gonna go over like all of the supplies that I'm using and all of that kind of stuff. But the reason why I'm doing this is because peppers are one of those things that I put a lot more time and energy into, honestly, um, because I really love growing them, even though they're they're kind of finicky for me. Let me just start off this off by saying this is just one method of, you know, all the different ways that you can start peppers. And this is kind of, like I said, what I've kind of narrowed down that works really well for me. Now, there are other people that they do just start their peppers like they would any other seedlings. So they just put the seed in the soil and that's all they do. And that's fantastic. That's just, I've never gotten very good success with that at all. And I really like this method for a few reasons. The first reason that I really like doing this is because I actually can see what results I'm getting. So not only do you end up knowing how many plants you're gonna get, you actually get that information a lot faster because usually peppers take a good long while to germinate and to sprout out of the ground. Doing it this way means that you can actually see those plants coming up. You can count them ahead of time. Um, you can plan around it. If you are not getting them to sprout, you can start more, like all of that kind of stuff. So for instance, last year with us, my pepper seeds weren't germinating at the rate that I wanted them to. I was using a lot of saved seeds and I, they just weren't doing anything. And so I waited weeks and weeks and weeks and there was nothing. And so what I did is I ended up starting a bunch more. Well, you know, very long, fun story short, I ended up with 140 pepper plants, which we put all of them in our garden. And we ended up growing, I think, I wanna say at least 100 pounds of peppers. I'd have to look at it. That was really great that I didn't have to wait as long to find out that my seeds weren't germinating uh, than I would for if I had just put them in soil like any other seed. Um, the other thing too is because pepper seeds are in the soil for so long, I have a lot of trouble with things like them actually ended up ending up moldy or rotting before they have a chance to sprout because you know you're trying to keep the moisture level in the soil right, but that seed is in the ground for a really long time before it germinates. And so doing it this way means that I can kind of see if I'm getting anywhere in like a week or two for some things, you know, three weeks tops, as opposed to waiting like a month or a month and a half and then come to find out you don't have any peppers that are coming up and then having to start over from then. So it saves a lot of time doing it this way, which I really like. And the other reason I really like doing it this way is because it saves space. So I can, you know, start all of my pepper seeds and again, find out that they're germinating and I've literally done this on the space of, you know, a, a dinner plate. Uh, I can stack them all together. I can put them all in one 10, 20 size tray and call it a day, right? As opposed to if I was doing each of these in individual cells, if I want 10 different plants for each variety that I am planting, that's a lot of cells and that's multiple trays of seedlings that I have to fill with soil, make space for, put under grow lights, uh, water regularly before I even know what I'm getting. And so those are the main reasons why I really love doing it this way. A couple things to know about peppers in general, if you're trying to grow them, whether you're gonna do a method like this or growing them in soil, what have you, uh, you are gonna wanna keep them in kind of a warm area because peppers really love heat. So usually, for them to germinate, uh, they want somewhere around like 70-ish degrees Fahrenheit. And they actually start to suffer when the temperatures are around 50 degrees or cooler. And so this was something that I found out the hard way when I first started trying to plant pepper seeds. Um, I had 
our entire grow station in our garage. And even with heat mats, it was still too cold in there and my peppers just like didn't do anything. And since then we've moved our grow station into our house. Uh, we have enough room in our office, which is great. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to germinate my seeds first, which basically means to like sprout the little root on them. And then once that root sprouts, then I plant them in soil and let them finish like popping up in the soil. So for this method, you will need something to put your seeds in. Um, I like to use Ziploc bags now. Previously, I would use like containers like this um, or, you know, like little like salsa containers. I've used even deli cup containers too. Uh, with the deli cups, I did really like those, but the problem with them is they were so big that they dried out really quickly. And so I like these sm kind of smaller containers because you can kind of create a little bit better of a greenhouse effect that'll last you know, 24 hours or a couple days without them drying up on you before you have a chance to check on it. But this year I am doing the Ziploc bag method. I didn't like this when I first started, but I have come across a few things that have kind of changed it for me. And I actually really do like this, especially if you're trying to save space because you can fit a lot of pepper seeds in this little container or in one of these containers but you know they're still going to add up if you're doing like more than six varieties and stuff like that and with the ziplocs you could just like stack them on top of each other and it takes up the same footprint which is really great and then i have a sharpie so that i can write the variety and the date on all of these uh, you could also use some blue tape if you want to and don't want to like write directly on your bags i also would recommend the blue tape to make a label to put on the tops of any other kind of container that you're using. Just use a piece of blue tape and write with a Sharpie on that. I have paper towels here. I do recommend using like a pretty strong paper towel instead of something like a napkin, just because the napkin will get like really soggy and mushy and kind of make a mess. And then I have a spray bottle here with this one just has water in it. And then I have a pair of scissors to cut the paper towels. And then the most important part, I have all of my pepper seeds. So today, what I am starting, we have uh, poblanos, we have um, these Craig's Grande Jalapenos, which I really like. We have pepperoncini, I'm not sure, but we really like these. And habanadas, this is my all time favorite pepper period that we grow. They are habaneros without any of the heat. So they have all the like fruity tropicalness without any of the heat. We grow the, a lot of these and we like putting them in salads. We like putting them in like chilies in the winter time. Like it's really great. Uh, we have Edgevarskis here. This is from Baker Creek. This was my favorite of the kind of like larger Italian style peppers that we grew last year. These are really awesome. And then we got these giant Marconis. So I got this one from MI Gardener. We we got all of our seeds from MI Gardener this year. And so I wanted to see how these compare to, to the um, Edgevarskis. And then I just got a couple bell peppers just for funsies. So I have an orange and a yellow. Um, the orange is called Coral Bell and the yellow is called Golden Cow Wonder Bell. So those are the ones that we're gonna be starting today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna write the names of all of these peppers on here just so that I can kind of like stack them and not accidentally <laughs> plant them all or accidentally place them all and then forget which one was which because outside of the packets, they all look exactly the same. So I'm gonna do that really fast. And then once I write on it, I'm just gonna put that seed packet right on top of it and keep myself organized that way. So, let me move this down so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay, so now that I have all of those sorted, I'm gonna start with the poblanos. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a paper towel. I really like the ones that you can kind of go into a half sheet because for the 
uh, these kind of like quart size Ziploc bags. I actually don't cut them or anything. I have the scissors for when, you know, I'm putting like a little itty bitty square of paper towel on the bottom of something like this. But for this, I just like to place the seeds and fold them over. So what I'm gonna do for these poblanos, I'm gonna say that I want probably like 10 of these plants. And so I'm gonna go ahead and plant probably close to 15. And I'm gonna put them on one half of this paper towel. So, okay, so kind of like that. So you can see here, I have my seeds and I'm just gonna put that packet over there now that I'm done with it. So I spread them out so that they're not touching each other. And this is in case um, any of them mold in this process. That way, like if one of the seeds fails for whatever reason, it doesn't like grow the mold automatically to like all of the seeds. And one thing that you can do also to kind of prevent this is you can put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in your water, like a, just a couple drops. You don't need a ton of it and do it that way. And I've done it both ways, but usually I have pretty good germination to the point where stuff starts sprouting before it molds. Unless it's like really old seeds that I'm working with, then in which case I have definitely lost them all to mold. So this year I'm just using water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it over and then open my Ziploc bag. And very carefully, I like to kind of like keep it pretty flat. And then I put the folded part in first so that it hinges like that. It's a lot easier to check on them if you have kind of like the opening flap at lined up with the opening part of the Ziploc bag. So I like to just like slide it in there and then I will come in here with a spray bottle once it's all contained and just wet the paper towel pretty good. I don't want it like soaked, but I want to have enough moisture in there where the entire thing is pretty damp. And some people will do this part first with the wet paper towel, then place the seeds because they feel like the seeds will kind of like sit better in there and then place it into the paper towel or paper, put it into the Ziploc, but I like doing it this way because I feel like it's just less messy. And then I seal it up and that's it. So I'm gonna do that same thing for all of these varieties. So as we're doing this, um, I mentioned that you might have some seeds that like develop a little bit of like this black looking mold. And what you wanna do if you notice that, or you know, a seed just looks bad in any kind of way is you wanna take it out of here as soon as possible. Now, what I do when I am ready to plant these seeds, which I'll show you once they've germinated, is I like to take them out with a pair of tweezers. Uh, I disinfect the tweezers in between each uh, packet of seeds so that I'm not like contaminating anything in any kind of way. If something is molding, you wanna get it out of the rest of the seeds as quickly as possible. I've even, you know, sometimes changed out the paper towel if I just wanted the seeds to kind of like continue fresh on a new paper towel. I'll just like move them over to a brand new one and to get rid of the mold altogether. And then once you have all these paper towels in here, um, you wanna check your seedlings every like day. Usually when you're starting out, you might wanna start checking them twice a day just to make sure that they don't dry out. That is the thing that you wanna avoid is uh, having them completely dry out. But once you have a feeling of like, okay, the moisture that, the amount of water that I'm putting in here is usually staying for a full 24 hours, then you can start checking them just once a day. And then with that also, you want to make sure that they are in a warm place, like I mentioned. So they prefer around 70 degrees, 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, if you can do that, if you can give them that. And, um, what you can do to supplement too is you can put them you know, on top of your fridge or you can have like a heat mat underneath them, whatever, whatever works. And then you also want to keep them in a dark place so that the seeds germinate. And so I just usually like cover the plate or tray or whatever I'm 
whatever I'm storing them in. I usually just cover that with like a, a towel, like a thick towel and do it that way. But as soon as the seeds germinate, as soon as you see like a little bit of a tail coming out of the seeds, it's a little, it'll be like a little white fuzzy tail, you wanna take them out. So you do not want to let the leaves actually form in these Ziplocs. And the main reason is that the longer that little tail is, which is the root of the pepper, the longer that is, it'll start actually growing into your paper towel. And so then you're gonna have to, I should move this. You're gonna have to like cut it or tear your paper towel to get that seed planted. And it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can totally do that. Like it's not like it's ruined or anything like that, but it's just more of a hassle. And so if you can just check them every day and then just take anything out that's starting to show that little tail, then you're good to go. And once your seeds are germinating and you are picking them up, that's when I like to go in there with the tweezers so that I am not touching them and potentially contaminating them that way. Also, if there is like any mold growing or anything like that, it keeps that off my hands. And uh, you know, like I said, if something is really moldy, I don't plant it. But if you know it's a little discolored, maybe you wanna try like, you know, it's your garden, do what you wanna do. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna do actually way more of these habanadas because we really like these. I might just finish this pack. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this pack. But yeah, so I really like to go in there with tweezers and to pick them up. And then when you pick them up, you want to pick them up from, so there's a little right there. So you wanna pick it up by the shell of the seed and don't pick it up by the little root tail that's coming out because you don't wanna break that off. But yeah, this is just a simple, easy way for me to start peppers. I have had a lot of success with this. Like I said, last year we grew 140 pepper plants and got a ton of food by starting them this way. It is a little bit more time consuming than you know just putting it in the soil, but I really like this method. I find that I get a lot better results with it. And if this is something that you're gonna try this year, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have a, a method that works really well for you, I'd love if you'd share that in the comments below so that we can all learn from each other. But thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.